dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Fans filing into the Alliant Energy Center here as day number three of competition at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games is underway. Thanks for being with us today, everybody here on the Rogue Iron Game. I am Sean Woodland with Andy Sakamoto and a man who I wanted to see do that event. That is Dan Bailey. Love the sprint events, man. I wanted to see you out there. I mean, you and me both. I'm going to be running it later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about Midnight what just went down because we've talked about mistakes and how costly they can be. That has gotten magnified as the competition has gone on, and they were gigantic in this last event for both men and women. Absolutely. I mean, you looked at some of the names on the leader or on the, the whiteboard out there as they were going along. All of a sudden, names that we were familiar with started popping up in red letters. We weren't sure what that meant at first, but apparently they had some sort of penalty assessed to them. We're not 100% we're not sure what those penalties were, but they were costly. We're talking like 10 seconds per race. So that takes you completely out right. of moving on into the next round. Wherever you were on that board is where you were stuck. Yeah. And we've talked about, you know, this weekend uh, making mistakes. And, and it, it's one thing to perform your best and it just not stack up. But in a time where it is so crucial to not make any mistakes, to see somebody like Pat Vellner make a mistake, incur a penalty, and pretty much cost himself possibly the rest of the weekend, it's painful to watch. Yeah, and when you think about Pat Vellner may not be there. Brent Fikowski may not be there. You can point to specific moments in this competition that probably cost them moving on, if not you know, for Fikowski into the top 20, but Vellner now uh, into the top 10. We'll talk about the individual competition more here in just a little bit, but we'll get you caught up on what has happened with the team competition as they started things off with the sprint relay. So Mayhem Freedom, they are still in the lead, but CrossFit Krypton sliced into their lead. They now just trail Mayhem Freedom by 61 points. Now that doesn't sound, I mean that sounds like a lot, but it's really not with a scoring system. Invictus X now sits in third place, but they are 155 points back of Mayhem Freedom. Uh, Central Beasts are in fifth, and OC3 Black dropped down two spots because of what happened there. They are now in sixth place. So this is basically a two-horse race at this point, but we can have huge point swings going on. But it's between Mayhem Freedom and CrossFit Krypton now for the rest of the weekend. This is going to be a fun battle to watch, but CrossFit Krypton, so impressive in that last event. Obviously, you needed to run quickly, but they had the right order of athletes picked out to help them get those 100 points. Absolutely. You could see in the final event, it put Alex Smith in the right position. He had somebody just in front of him. You have mm -hmm. that little bit of rabbit to chase. Nobody made any mistakes. They were able to execute perfectly through the event, take away 100 points. Right. I mean, you saw that, that Camille held her own, but it was really for Krypton. Once Jessica Smith took the field, she was able to narrow the gap between Jessica Griffith excuse me, and she was able to narrow the gap between themselves and Mayhem Freedom. And then once Alex Smith was shot out of that cannon, he finished so beautifully on the event. And you know, yesterday we were talking a little bit about, about, about the fact that Mayhem might not be catchable, that Krypton had to run their own race, but they're catchable. Look what's happening on the men's side of competition right now, something that we did not think was possible. And so I think, you know, yesterday I was talking about Krypton just needing to kind of do their own thing. Mayhem is within reach. They've narrowed that gap to 61 points now. Uh, they could easily take it from them. You know, and Alex Smith is the guy that we gave a lot of credit to. You always give the credit to the guy who scored the touchdown, but it was Jessica Griffith who put him in position to do that. She, each time they were in the competition, and you can see it here, I mean, just handed off a big lead to Alex Smith, and he only made that bigger uh, when he hit the field. So that was a strategy that worked for them, but Jessica Griffith you know, doing as much good work as Alex Smith was, and Alex Smith, both times on the anchor leg gets the win for CrossFit Krypton and they slice 30 points off of Mayhem Freedom's lead just like that. It's down to 61. Now Mayhem's still looking solid uh, in first place, but if CrossFit Krypton can keep putting on the pressure here, we might have a, a very exciting finish uh, on Sunday. We're going to have more on the team competition in just a second, but as far as the individual competition is concerned, we do not have overall standings because they are cutting the field down now to 10 athletes, they're going to announce that. On the women's side of things, it's, here are some names you take a look at who are potentially not going to be advancing in the competition. You got Catherine Davis' daughter, uh, Annie Thoros' daughter, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, Laura Horvath, and Sam Briggs. And coming into this competition, if I had told you that just one of those names 
was in danger. You would have said, I, I am crazy and I should probably let someone else do this job. Who's the most shocking of the women I just said to you on that list? Because to me, it, it's, it is still Sarah Sigmund's daughter. I mean, I would have to actually go with Katrin David's really? daughter. Okay. Just from being a past champion, she's been there. She knows what it takes to win and to succeed and be on the top of that podium. Um, very well trained as well. but. I'm just, I'm shocked. Like, I look at the names right. again, like you mentioned, and for somebody who has that much experience, who's been a two-time champ, definitely did not expect her to not make it into the top 10, right? I mean, if, you, if she made it into the top 10, took fourth, fifth, sixth, it's like, okay, maybe she had a little bit of an off year, but definitely not a name that we were going to say she's not going to even move on to Sunday. Right, I mean, we were talking about the second back-to-back -back female champion, somebody that we easily saw being the first uh, three-peat champion, not making it past the first event of the third day. That's just kind of mind-blowing. I mean, the fact that there's three past champions in this conversation, and then the rookie of the year in Laura Horvath last year, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter, the one woman that we thought might have the chance of beating Toomey are all going to be sitting on the field for the rest of the day. What about Annie Thorstadter? You mentioned two-time champions. I mean, she's another one who yeah. was on the bubble there. And she was basically the gatekeeper for everybody trying to get in. We don't know whether or not she's going to move on, but the fact that she's in this situation is shocking as well. And we can kind of go back to this Ruck event when she was, take you back to 2015. If she's going to point to a moment, that's going to be it for her. Right, and that's hard because is that a mistake? We, we can we can say that a lot of the other things that have happened for some of these athletes is more of a mistake. And, and looking at Annie and that event, I don't know that we would call that a mistake, but it's definitely the moment that is going to cost her possibly the rest of the weekend. And yeah, and I mean, she's one of those athletes we mentioned kind of took a dip there in 2015. We had wondered if, okay, maybe she's kind of done with that when she had her time. And then she started to make a strong rebound. So I think high, hopes were pretty high for her this year. And to see her get cut as well is just shocking. With Sam Briggs, we always expect good things for her, but let's look at the facts here. She's 37 years old. She qualified as a master. Uh, it's hard to keep up with younger athletes. I mean, she is still incredible, but I am not shocked that maybe she's not going to make it into the top 10. Of the athletes that got cut, I think Sam can keep her, held her head held yes. high the most. Based on what we talked about in one of our first shows, the season she's had has been absolutely ridiculous. You mentioned the right. only way that she didn't qualify for this weekend <laughs> right. was in the men's competition. <laughs> exactly. Right? And not only is, you know, age plays a factor, but she had surgery on her elbow. She's had some things go wrong. And still being able to recover from that rebound, make it back to the 2019 CrossFit Games in the open competition with all the big ladies in the field, it was just incredibly impressive. So, Sam, keep your head, head held high. Now, Laura Horvath is another name I don't think we expected at this time last year, we think we're thinking, okay, she's going to be a fixture now in this battle. And then we saw how this season played out and some of the struggles that she had. This one doesn't come as a huge surprise either. No, and I think, like you said, last year at this time, if you had said Laura Horvath might not be in the competition on the third day of competition, I think we all would have said you're absolutely nuts. With the way that she looked competing last year at the Games, Yes, she had a rough season. There was obviously some injuries, some, some bumps in the road for Laura Horvath. Um, and so, you know, watching her at the Rogue Invitational, I think a lot of us thought, I don't know if she's got it this year. She came in. She actually did more than I had expected her to do thus far this weekend. But again, for the Rookie of the Year, for the, for the silver place finisher last year, I don't want to be saying, oh, yeah, she hung on for this weekend. And that's all she really did this weekend. Last year when Sarah Sigmund's daughter withdrew from the competition, we understood why there was an injury. She wasn't able to perform at a high level. This year, there are going to be a lot of people, I think, including Sarah Sigmund's daughter, scratching their heads right now. And it looks like, a, once again, it's back to the drawing board for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Where does she go from here? Yeah, I think it's something where you just have to look at the length of the season. Um, and maybe change some of your training leading up to it. Again, I'm not 100% certain if it was something where her fitness is that far off or if it was just execution in every workout with the magnification of the cuts and the stress and the mental uh, uh, trouble that you have to deal with, with with worrying about those changes in points. We just did not see the Sarah that we thought we were going to see, especially after a strong commanding performance at the Rogue Invitational. Let's go now to the other end of the leaderboard where we have Tia Toomey, who's still going to be your overall leader. But now you have Kristen Holta, who we're going to talk a lot about her now, <laughs> who is always just hanging around there in the top five, and at the end of the weekend, bam, there she is, you know, seventh place for the last two years. Now she has a legitimate shot of wearing the overall leader's jersey. What are you looking forward to seeing 
in that battle now as we go through the rest of the weekend. I'm looking forward to see uh, how Tia deals with having this competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we last year Laura, Laura was on her tails, but it was clear that Tia, I think, was going to win the competition. Right now, the way it looks, Kristen Holta has a good chance of taking over that leader jersey. Um, and I think Kristen Holta is the type of athlete, at least she appears to me right now, to be very calm and collected, and she's handling this very well. How will Tia handle being challenged? Yeah, I'm curious to see actually how Kristen handles it. I don't think she's ever wore the leader jersey before. I might be corrected by the Master of Knowledge, Sean Wooden, here in a moment. I don't but think she has. I mean, she's won events before. Right. But I don't think she's ever won the overall leader jersey. And it does change things. Yes. Now the cameras are always on you. The eyeballs are on you. Everybody in the arena is talking about you. How can she handle that stress, that pressure? Right now, off of what I've seen in past years, I think she's going to handle it very well. She seems to be a very calm, cool, collected person, doesn't wear all her emotions on her sleeve. She just walks out onto the floor and takes care of business. On the men's side of things, let's talk about some notable cuts. There's not as many, but Pat Velner came in in 10th place overall. I think the best he can do uh, is 10th in that event. I don't know if that's going to be enough to hold off the people who are chasing him. And then Lucas Hogberg, the guy who finished on the podium last year. I mean, two guys, these are the two guys who finished behind Matt Fraser on the podium, and they might not be moving on. Which one is more surprising to you? I mean, for me, it's Pat Vellner, yeah. honestly. I mean, the past two years are just the, the culmination of things that have gone wrong for him right. in different events. We talked last year about the cargo net, uh, hurting his ribs, doing all sorts of different things there. And the last event, he's moving the yoke across the floor, and all of a sudden his plates just kind of scattered all over the place. And it, it, it's almost like the guy can't catch a break a little bit, but at some point you have to wonder, is it about preparation, execution, and being ready for the test when it comes to that day? Right, but I mean, what was so incredible about Pat Vellner is with all of those mishaps last year, he was still able to pull a second place finish. Uh, whereas this year, you know, because of the cuts, right. you know, if, if it wasn't the cuts, he would be okay right now. Mm -hmm. None of us would be so concerned with Pat Vellner. Yes, he would have some time to make it up, but because there's cuts, and he's now out of time to make it up. Mm -hmm. It could just be bye-bye Pat Vellner. Yeah, and it's essentially the same story for Lucas Hogan. I mean, his really good event came out in the ruck. He won that. But then after that, that's when his trip down the leaderboard started. And you just cannot be making mistakes when you're trying to stay away from the cut line. Right, just when you think you're actually riding high off of an event win, and not only an event win, a commanding event win, right? He did incredibly well. You come back to uh, an event like the Sprint Relay, and all of a sudden, all that's vanished in a matter of a half a day, right? So that's not something we've ever seen before. That's not something the athletes have had to deal with. Right. I mean, it was it was great to see Lucas Hogberg uh, do as well as he did last year. He's had a great season this year, um, and it's just it's it's always a bummer to see an athlete kind of make some momentum, gain some momentum like Lucas has over the past couple of years at the CrossFit Games, and then end up not being able to finish out a weekend of competition. So. You know, my heart goes out to all of these athletes, right. but that is the competition this weekend. Exactly. You know, and if you can't adapt to the changes, then you got to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that one big lesson that we're learning here is that athletes are going to start not only changing the way they train for this, but changing the way they approach it. Yes. Because right. there is no time to build up. You got to start fast. You got to start now. At, at event number one. You guys ready for another event? We have another event in yep. This is go. the first time that we're seeing this one. <laughs> this is True Team reaction. Event 7. It is the Team Big Chipper. So they're going to be working in pairs. So we, the cheese curd's back. <laughs> so we have 50 cheese curd cleans. That's a, for the men, it's a 100 pound curd on a 36 inch box. For the women, it's 70 pounds. And 50 box jump overs. 50 Team Axle Bar Deadlifts. That's at 715 pounds. 50 synchro GHD sit-ups, 12 burpee snail jump overs. That's going to be interesting to watch. You've never seen that movement before. And then we go back down the other way. So back through the GHD sit-ups. So it's up and back team big chipper. This is the first time you guys are seeing this. What stands out to you about this event? I'll tell you what, um, probably some of the communication, honestly. I mean, working in pairs again, the thing that sticks out to me is that burpee snail jump overs. Yeah. Depending on what the standard is there mm -hmm. for when they all have to be on the ground and when they all have to rise off the ground, you can do yourself a lot of disservice if you get a no rep there. Right. Nobody likes getting no reps on burpees. Well, and here's the question, too. That thing's only four feet wide. How do you fit two how athletes going? Like, how are you going to do that? Are they going to go one at a time? So that remains to be seen. That could be a, a huge difference, too. Yeah, if they have some access to that worm in the back, which I kind of doubt that they will, they're right. probably going to be exposed to it when they get it out on the floor.
floor, it would definitely be something that you would want to practice. And if you haven't practiced it, you're going to have to figure it out real quick in those first couple reps, the most efficient way to move through it. What's your initial reaction to this? Well, overall, this is just a lot of work that has to get done, right? So uh, I think it's all about managing the pairs uh, and making sure that you get through it in a, in a real fluid manner. Who do you like, teams-wise, here? Think that we're down to nine. My easy pick's going to be Mayhem. Yeah, you should go I with mean, Mayhem when you're easy to Look at a, a, a volume of work like that right, right there. Right. How can you not pick Mayhem? I, I was down there with them on a training weekend. And we did. They did a workout incredibly actually similar to this. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of the cheese curd or sandbag right. work. And I also know that GHDs is another thing that um, Rich harps on everybody to be incredibly good at and forces them to be good at through their training. How about you? Putting you on the spot. O outside of Mayhem. Yes. I'm going to go with Krypton. They've got, yeah. they've, they Why have, not? you know, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing to lose and everything to gain on a workout like this. All right, we're going to join the world feed now and get you back out to the North Parks for Team Event 7. That's going to start here uh, momentarily. But you know, there are teams here on the, the leaderboard, like OC3 Black. Uh, they're 200 points out of first, but they're realistically, they can find themselves on the podium because they're only 42 back, points back of Invictus for that third and final spot. And the Central Beasts are another team that would like to do well in this event. I like to see the deepest black chances in this because now we're getting to some stuff yeah. that I think they're probably more used to doing. So keep your eye on them. Uh, so I'll take that mantle from you. I Thank will now you. be the OC3 black guys. You've now jumped on the, uh, <laughs> on the uh, CrossFit Krypton uh, bandwagon. No. I shouldn't say bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> You are, you are what you're pivoting. Just trying to be nice and say I was right. Yeah. You might have been wrong. <laughs> That's all. That's the very kind way uh, of putting that. <laughs> so I team like event seven. Here. They're keeping it exciting out there. I like that, right? We were taking a look at the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. We'll have action in there later on today. And now we are back out at the North Park where all the different pieces of equipment are scattered about the field in an organized fashion as nine teams remain in this competition as we head into the seventh event. So the teams now have to worry about cuts because we're going from nine to seven and eventually down to five. So cuts are still a factor for the team. These are the overall standings. We just talked about that. Mayhem Freedom, your overall leaders. CrossFit Krypton knocked 30 points off of that deficit in the last event. So they now trail Rich Froning and company by just 61 points. Invictus X and Invictus in third and fourth. And then the Central Beasts they are in fifth. OC3 Black, they sit in sixth place overall. So two teams from Invictus trying to find their way onto the podium. We just talked about it, but there's a look at the event. And there is that 100-pound cheese curve. No hay bales this year, though. I love the fact that this is a, a part of the event or an implement that gets thrown into the games because it's not a barbell, right? We, we get so accustomed to picking up barbells up off the floor. There's a specific way you have to do it. Now we're not just going to pick up barbells. We're going to pick up an odd object, have to manipulate that. It takes a different kind of skill to do it as well. And you guys have worked with those actual bars before. I mean, how difficult is that? Not only just by yourself, but then you added a partner. Right. They're so difficult. I'm somebody with small hands, so those axle balls really ruin me. But like you said, coordinating that with somebody else and just the, the sheer length of the bar and being able to handle that is really tough. Yeah, and if you have a bunch of athletes who are different heights being on an axle bar, that's going to change the workload per individual. Different people are going to be locking out the top of those deadlifts at different times. can cause some different stresses on individual athletes. We will only have one heat. All nine teams that remain are on the field. We are ready to go for Team Event 7, the Big Chipper. We're underway. We start with the 50 cheese curd cleans, 70 pounds for the women, 100 pounds for the men. I'm looking at some technique there. I would think the best place you can position yourself is you want to be right behind the athlete that's cleaning the cheese curds so that you can be right on top of that thing. As soon as it hits the ground, from one person cleaning it up over the shoulder, the next person can grab it right away. That's CrossFit Alley up. Working through their curd cleans. Look how light they make those cheese curds look, right? Almost like they're bouncing. And we have not been briefed on this event, so we don't know all the rules and standards, but we need to see if they have to wait for their entire team to finish before they can move on to the next event. Alexis Johnson and Jen Smith for Team Don't Stop. You can 
see them doing the fastest way of kind of getting that up over the shoulders. One grab with both arms straight up and over. Sometimes athletes, when they get tired, if the weight's a little heavier, they might have to put it in their lap first, take a pause, and then throw it over. But this weight of 70 and 100 pounds is not proving to be very difficult for anybody right now. So they advance after 25 reps. The overall leader's name in the heat will be highlighted in the blue boxes. Right now it is OC3 Black. They are through 33, now 34 of those 50 cheese curd cleans. So each pair having to complete 50 reps before they can move on. Take a look at Trey Strom and Rich Froning working together in the middle of your screen with China Cho and Tasia Persevich as Mayhem Freedom. Still the owners of those white overall leader's jerseys. In fact, we talked to their coach today. Facundo, yeah. we know him by his first name. Yeah. He actually had to go wash those jerseys because they didn't have enough. <laughs> so he had, not only was he a coach, he was a he was a laundry, he did the laundry, laundry man. Too. Laundry so he's a jack of all trades. <laughs> Great that, problem to have. Yes. yes. <laughs> when you have your own laundry man, you know you're you're doing okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's OC3 Black through those cheese curd cleans first. Not surprising. Now we move on to the 50 box jump over. So OC3 Black. And the Central Beasts are onto those. That's a look at the Central Beasts. And now just about every team onto the box jump overs. Joe Scally in the right side of your screen, a former individual athlete, competed at the games in 2015. Watching the box jump overs and the cheese curds, or the throwing the cheese curd over the shoulder. The things that are sticking out to me, even though everybody's so even, is are there little half-second splits right. between you jumping back up on the box? Are there little confusions where, you know, there was a miscommunication and you thought you were going to jump, somebody else was going to go? All those things over all these reps is going to build up, and that's probably going to be one of the biggest separators for sure on the way back through this event. Right, like you're saying, there's so many reps, so essentially there's so many transitions that Although you wouldn't think that a, that a half second transition would matter, it will over this many reps. There are 332 total scored repetitions in this event. They'll get credit for a repetition once all four of their athletes clear the box. So Pro 1, they are your leaders through 84 of those 312 total repetitions. At the 100 mark, they will move on to the 50 team axle bar deadlifts. At 715 pounds, all four athletes at a time working on that axle bar. It's Pro 1 followed by Aliop, and then CrossFit Krypton in a distant third place right now. Still very, very, very early in this event, though. A lot of lead changes can happen over the course of 330 plus events, or movements rather, reps. Mayhem Freedom sits in fourth place in the heat, and the Central Beast and OT3 Black. They are trading fifth place right now, but Pro 1, they are now just about done. And Pro 1 is a team that needs to do well. They're sitting there in that ninth place position. This is a time for them to make their move. Now here's the issue. The scoreboard says Pro 1 has 100. Their reps may have been calculated incorrectly, as they're still working, obviously. So the 100 mark, that's when the teams will move on. So don't stop. Could be your leaders right now. We don't know how many repetitions that Pro 1 has completed because the score is wrong. Had they completed 50 for 100 total reps, they'd already be on the axle bar. This CrossFit alley off. The pair of Mia Ackerlund and Sin Krogstad. Phil Heskett and Alexander Alebro, the male pair, working through their box jump overs. Don't stop. They say they are now through 100. But that doesn't look to be the case either because they are not on to their Axel Bar deadlifts. So we will wait and see who advances to the barbell first before we decide who is the leader here. Because again, in theory, they should not be getting a rep counted until all four members have cleared the box. 
And now Pro 1 is done. So they are in the lead. They are through 100 of the 312 repetitions. And now it's 50 deadlifts on the axle bar, 715 pounds on that bar. What are the challenges when you're dealing with athletes who are different heights here on this thing? So different athletes are going to lock out their rep at a different time. So as soon as an athlete kind of locks out their rep, the taller person is technically still pulling on that barbell. So where you position yourself is going to be key. And then you can see the timing of going up and down. What you want to do is get both of those plates to touch the ground at the same time, not a right-left or a left-right bounce that's going to throw off your rhythm and cause way more weight to be put on one athlete versus another. Central Beast now through 113 of the 312 reps, they have taken the lead. And I do believe this is a movement that CrossFit Mayhem Freedom trains a lot. Now a no rep for Pro One. Looked like Joe Scali took his hands off the bar and let it drop a little bit early, whereas the other members did not. Scali and Fontaine on the outside with Allard and Madeline Lassour on the inside. Rain Allard is on the right of that pair, Manan Lasseur is on the left. The Central Beast, they are through 120 as they and OC3 Black across at Alioth are fighting for the lead here. So OT3 Black oh. continuing to work very well here as they are through 127 of the repetitions. The Central Beast advancing their barbell as they are through 25. And they will complete the next 25 before moving on to the 50 synchro GHD sit-ups. Must be synchronized at the top when they touch the pad. Central Beast, Nicole Holcomb, Emma Chapman, Zach Souter, and Joseph Tortora. And they were a team that surprisingly did very well very early, very early on in the competition. OC3 Black through 132 of the 312 total repetitions. Now they only have to do 30 reps of each of these movements on the way back, which should allow them to speed up on the back half of the event. Mayhem Freedom, meanwhile, creeping up as your top three teams are the Central Beasts, OC3 Black, and Mayhem Freedom. And that's a look at Don't Stop. Roy Gamboa, Jen Smith, Alexis Johnson, and Travis Williams. The familiar look from Mayhem Freedom, starting somewhere in the middle to the back of the pack as we move along through the workout. Now all of a sudden they're up in second place. Now Mayhem Freedom Make and the Central Beasts are even with 140 of the 312 total repetitions done. Long break there for CrossFit Krypton. People with their hands on their knees. Devastating amount of weight on that axle bar. And you can see the height difference between their athletes. It just makes that lift a little more awkward. OC3 Black now has jumped back in the lead. And they are done with the deadlifts and should be moving on now to the GHG sit-ups. Now here comes Mayhem Freedom. That's OC3 Black. Joe Persanti, Luke Schaefer, Taylor Williamson, and Andrea Nissler. Again, the synchronization occurs at the top. Fifty of these and then twelve burpee snail jump overs and then they work their way back down the field and at the bottom right you can see one of the judges uncovering the snail. They were trying to keep the heat off that thing because the athletes are going to be most likely climbing over climbing, it. rolling, diving, <laughs> whatever they can over that thing in order to, to get on the other side. And we've never seen this movement, I we don't believe, not. in team competition. No. Right, we've seen them do burpees and jumping over the worm, but now it's a much taller object, a little more awkward over the snail. Right now, the athletes are on the 50 synchro GHD sit-ups. After the 12 burpee snail jump overs, it's back down the field in reverse order, but only 30 reps on each implement. That's a look at Invictus X, Margot Alvarez in the red, Mayhem Freedom on the right, and look how synchronized they are. I mean, this is, you set your watch to that. Yeah. And I believe Don't Stop, uh, excuse me, CrossFit Krypton is still on the floor with that axle bar deadlift right now. Yeah, they have fallen way back in the pack right now. The only team not on the GHD sit-ups. At least they have yet to get credit for a single rep. Pro One, who they were the first team to the deadlifts. 
but they have fallen back in the pack. They are now fourth in the heat. Mayhem Freedom has overtaken OC3 Black. And Dan, you mentioned it, GHD sit-ups, and that is what has allowed them to take the lead right now. They are now through 200 repetitions. At 212, it's back down the field. OC3 Black now in second place. They are in the middle of your screen. They are now done. And now it's on to the burpee snail jump overs. It's going to be one athlete at a time. They each have to do 12 repetitions. Just looking at it right now, every little individual step, extra foot placement you have to make on that snail to get over is going to be a little bit of a separator. If you can kind of clear it like Dre Strom did just there, two hands on top, flipping the hips across, that's going to be the fastest way to move. And they're going to have to be careful to not swing their feet out and around that snail. That'll be a no rep, so they have to go directly over, the, over that implement, and they have to stay inside that width of just four feet. Taylor Williamson, she makes it over the snail for OC3 Black. Yeah, OC3 Black looks really smooth the way they're going over the snail right now. Like you were saying, Dan, no real wasted steps or movement. They're only two reps back of Mayhem Freedom, so they've been able to gain a little ground on them on this movement. Crossfit alley off here in the foreground. Mayhem Freedom and OC3 Black are tied. They are 206 repetitions through the 312 scored reps. As we go back to OC3 Black, Taylor Williamson making it across. Luke Schaefer and now Joe Persanti on his way back over. Andrea Nistler, now Taylor Williamson. So OC3 Black, for the first time in the competition, they lost some ground in the last event. They fell from the fourth down to sixth. But they are only 42 points out of third place. That could be made up very quickly here. Yep. Now that we are down to nine teams, there's a 12 point difference just between first and second. Right, as we've seen all the way across the competition, right now it doesn't seem like any lead is insurmountable, right. especially right. now where we're at in the weekend. Right. I've had to reprogram myself. I look at a lead that's you know, 61 <laughs> points. Well, yeah. that's over. No, it's not. No, it's that not. could disappear in <laughs> it's nothing. a matter yeah. of an event. Right. OC3 Black. Just about done with the burpee snail overs, and they are going to make the turn back down the field just ahead of Mayhem Freedom. Such an impressive pace on those burpee snail overs for OC3 Black. But OC3 Black, this is where they surrendered the lead to Mayhem Freedom. So Mayhem Freedom is now moving on to the sit ups as well. They are on the left side of your screen, China Cho and Dre Strom. And they continue to move at the same clip they did the last time they were working through this movement. Now remember, we have to do just 30 movements, or 30 repetitions of each movement. So only 90 repetitions, we'll make that 120 repetitions remain in this event, 312 total. The Mayhem Freedom is now through 230 of those 312. OC3 Black in second place. OC3 Black, the good news for them, even though they're not beating Mayhem Freedom at the moment, they are well ahead of the two teams, the three teams make that, ahead of them in the overall standings. Central Beasts right now are fourth place in this heat, but Invictus and Invictus X are seventh and eighth. This, this second set of GHD sit-ups here is really going to show us which team has been preparing on this implement. The first set, that's not so many reps that any of these athletes should really have a whole lot of trouble with. But then you only have a very short break. You're not double tapping the snail or burpee over the snail. You're returning right back to those GHD sit-ups without much of a break. Still an open close movement on that burpee. And you can see one of the teams who's trained it the most, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, back onto the deadlift. There really is nothing you can throw at this team that they haven't seen before. Absolutely not. At this point, no. The, the amount of history that the team has been through and the events that they've been exposed to, not only have they dealt with a lot of these implements before, I feel like it gives them a good foresight into what could potentially be, what could we have to prepare for. 
OC3 Black starting to struggle a little bit with that deadlift, so they're going to take a break. But they and Mayhem Freedom, the only two teams on the 30 axle bar deadlifts at 715 pounds. After this, it's 30 box jump overs and then the final 30 curd cleans. OC3 is falling back by a um, rep of Mayhem Freedom. Mayhem Freedom has advanced their barbell. Now here comes OC3 on the right side of your screen. So they have started to leave the field behind. Now don't stop, and that's good for OC3. They have moved into third as the Central Beasts have fallen back now into fifth place in this heat. There's a very good chance that with one event, OC3 Black could jump from sixth to third. Well, and besides that, CrossFit Krypton has really fallen off. They haven't come off of their work so that will also help OC3 Black to move up the leaderboard. CrossFit Krypton is in ninth place out of nine teams in this heat as the foursome of Joe Persanti, Luke Schaefer, Taylor Williamson, and Andrea Nissler continue to work away for OC3. Now on the right side of your screen and on the left, it's Rich Froning and CrossFit Mayhem Freedom looking to defend their team championship here at the CrossFit Games. You think about Rich Froning, he has been to the CrossFit Games every year since 2010, and he has never finished lower than second. That's, that's unbelievable. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. That's something you want to <laughs> hang on your refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a trophy case full of medals yeah. somewhere in Cookville, Tennessee. And you know, physically, that is phenomenal feat, right? But even just mentally, to be able to have that hunger, that drive, the purpose to be competing that long is really impressive. Mayhem Freedom has moved on to the 30 box jump overs. It's the second to last movement for them, so just 60 reps remaining. 30 box jump overs and then 30 cheese curd cleans. They and OC3 Black, the only two teams on this implement. On the right of your screen, that's CrossFit Krypton. They are still on their second round of GHDs. But now, given the swing that we can see in points, they might fall out of second place. Yep. If OC3 Black were to finish second place, they'd earn 88 points. If Krypton finishes last, that's four. That's a difference of 84 points. Jeez, in one event. Lesson from today, no one is safe. Yeah, that's yes. absolutely right. OC3 Black now pulling even with Mayhem Freedom. Just a couple of reps back, and OC3 Black has now moved on to their final 15 reps as they continue to creep towards the finish line. Invictus, bottom right of your screen, they are on their 715-pound axle bar deadlifts. They came into this event in fourth place overall. Mayhem Freedom trying to hold off OC3 Black here in the final stages of Team Event 7, the big team chipper. And for the first time in two years, the big cheese curds are back here in the North Park. 312 total repetitions, Mayhem Freedom through 296 and counting. Approaching the 20 minute mark here of this event. It's the only heat. The nine teams that are left in the competition are out on the floor. And remember, we still have two cuts remaining in the team competition. We're going to go down to seven teams and then finally to five. 12-1 Montreal, they're doing great. They were one of the first teams to get to the barbell on the way down the field. I can't read my own handwriting. It's 332 repetitions. That's what happens when you write things in a hurry. Write things in a hurry. <laughs> so there are 332 repetitions in this event and Mayhem Freedom is on their final 30. Here comes OC3 Black, they're on the bottom left of your screen. 30 cheese curd cleans. 70 pounds to the women, 100 pounds to the men. Every athlete needs to do 30. Still a pretty close race there between first and second. Only yep. four to six reps behind. Well, now it's gaining seven. By the scoreboard, Mayhem Freedom is seven reps ahead of OC3 Black. We're going to wait and see who crosses the finish line first to be sure as Mayhem Freedom's women are advancing. They are through 
15. Mayhem Freedom creeping closer now to that 332 mark. OC3 Black advancing as well. So OC3 Black, as they have done all competition, moving themselves up the leaderboard. The only exception, the last event where they lost ground, they were in fourth, dropped to sixth. They're in sixth place, and with this result, they could crack the top three easily. These are the teams that are still on the box jump overs on their way back down the field. Pro one closest to the camera next to them is Don't Stop. Persevich and Cho are done, and they're waiting on Strom and Froning. Josh is point out. Mayhem Freedom is not done with the event. They have to cross the finish line. That time is not official. But what is, is that Rich Roding and company have won another event. Again, the same thing we kind of saw from previous events. Didn't start off in the front of the pack. Got to the crux of their workout. Were able to move into first place. Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson are waiting on Joe Persanti and Luke Schaefer. They don't have to worry about another heat, and they really don't have to worry about any of the teams behind them. They can take their time because they have locked up second place, and OC3 Black is right back in the mix. Huge move for OC3 Black right there. Right there, They really needed that. We were talking about them needing to get into a podium position. That was a great move for them right there. Mayhem Freedom's going to earn 100 points. OC3 Black will earn 88. The central beasts, according to the scoreboard, are your leaders on the field. They're trying to hold off OC3 Black. If they do come across the finish line next, they'll earn 76 points. So they will surrender 12 points to OC3 Black. That's Pro One. The team that qualified out of the Brazil CrossFit Championship to get here to Madison, Wisconsin. But like you were saying, Sean, the three teams that stand between the Central Beast and OC3 Black and Mayhem are Krypton, Invictus X, and Invictus all still on the field. And keep in mind, we're cutting down to seven teams after this event. So don't stop. Alioth and Pro One are the teams on that bubble. Don't Stop sits in seventh coming into this event. Alioth and Pro One need to beat Don't Stop across the finish line. And CrossFit Alioth, right now, they are on their cheese curd cleans, as are the members of Don't Stop. But they are ahead of some of the teams that they are chasing as another team has come across the finish line. Don't Stop is Don't in. Stop. So it looks like they're going to hang on to a spot inside the top seven. Alioth at the bottom of your screen, and now Pro in Montreal, as Joe Scally and David Fontaine continue to work through their cleans, they came in in ninth. They have to gain two spots in order to get themselves into the next event. And this is Invictus. Rasmus Anderson and Tommy Venus tossing that cheese curd around, as are Reagan Huckabee and Lauren Fisher. They are by far moving the fastest on the cheese curd right now. I don't know if it's going to be enough to make up the gap. 20 seconds to go before we hit the 25-minute time cap. Alioth is in. That is huge for CrossFit Alioth. Now, Pro 1 Montreal is going to get in inside the time cap. They were just 13 points back of Alioth. Alioth needed to make a ton, up a ton of points, though, on Don't Stop in order to get past them. And after winning the last event, CrossFit Krypton is going to finish last in this event. But they had enough insurance to keep themselves inside the top seven. And speaking of insurance, that's exactly what Rich Froning and his team just got with 100 more points. No question, they are moving on. And they are going to widen their lead by a significant margin over CrossFit Krypton. But... Teams like OC3 Black and Don't Stop are creeping up. But this is the back half of the event. And Dan, you said it earlier, and we said it throughout the competition, get faster later. That seems to be the modus operandi for this team. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen it in every event. And again, like I can 
recall back to when in Rich was an individual, an individual competition, it was a very similar thing, right? Uh, he would do the same thing in, in individual events. He'd be very calm, collected at the start, maybe be a little bit behind, and then push through to the finish. And he's obviously instilled that into his team here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Seven events, four wins for Rich Froning and CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. If there's anything we've seen from you guys across the board is that you have such a calm, consistent pace throughout everything that you do, and how are you able to maintain that on a long event like this through all of those different pieces of equipment? Uh, we've done many combinations of all these different movements, and so we kind of knew where we needed to push. Um, I mean, it's 50 reps on the deadlift was going to be hard. We knew that, so um, we just tried to stay in our game and and uh, push it at the end. That was the game plan, and we pushed as hard as we could. <laughs> I don't know how much push there was. Well, considering the fact that we are facing eliminations and there's sort of constant pressure out here on the field, you guys are all seasoned veterans at this point, but does it change the way that you approach the competition? Absolutely not. We want to win every event. Seems to be working so far. Congratulations, guys. We have a couple left, but yeah. thank you. So far, he's won four of seven. And unofficially, Mayhem Freedom's lead over CrossFit Krypton who stays in second place is now 157 points. So Mayhem Freedom gets the win. OC3 Black will finish in second place. They will unofficially move themselves into fourth place overall. The Central Beast, they move up the leaderboard as well. They now sit in third. Invictus X with their result of seventh. They have dropped to fifth and then don't stop with their fourth place finish. They are now in sixth place overall. The three teams hitting the time cap of the nine. We're cutting down to seven. We're going to take a break. We'll be back at 1.15 to continue our coverage here on the Rogue Iron Game from the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin.